And we have one short case study um, to talk to. So we, as well as being interested in substitution and dilution, we, some of the group were actually looking to see if they could find evidence of cooperation among businesses in the town. And we, we, they did come find limited evidence. Um, and the best, the most interesting case was to do with one-man businesses who were butchers, um, who were clearly had got a, a cooperative <coughs> arrangement in place. Um, I think in introducing this, it's worth saying that one-man businesses had been treated sympathetically by the Tute Tribunal, and there's also a government ruling in June 1916 on one-man businesses, after which they were generally granted six months conditional ex exemption. The scheme in St Albans was triggered in March 1917 when the tribunal was taking butchers' appeals as a group. The chairman asked for details about the amount of killing the group had to do and decided that the work could be done by two or maybe three of the five butchers in the group. The butchers were asked to retire and arranged that two should go and that those remaining would look after the interests of the, of the absent. One of the butchers, a gentleman called Mr Hearn, who had six children, offered to go and the others agreed to do his killing, which was for a Mr. Potton, and to make up Mr. Hearn's money to his wife. The chairman was still not happy with this because it was only one person who was offering to go, and got an agreement later that if Mr. Hearn and one other person went, the others would help with the work. And the tribunal then decided to take a gentleman called Horace Oakley, who was the youngest and a fully fit A um, person, man, um, as the second um, person. So another butcher agreed to support Oakley's cook-to-food trade so that he might have a business to return to after the war. Um, as far as we can see from the records, Oakley was in his business, came back and he was in his business after the war, and the other gentleman, Hearn, did return home to his family in 1919, though we don't know to what business he went. Um, and I th that concludes that section. I was just going to say a few concluding to wrap up our, our joint sort of session our conclusions. I mean, our, our research on the project is still very much in progress, um, but we hope we've been able to provide some ideas today for how you might you know, approach some of your own research in this area. And clearly we had to work within the limits of our sources. We were lucky that the Hearts had um, reported the city tribunals in such great detail, as we've sort of mentioned several times already. Um, not all local papers did this. Um, so the paper, I think John has said, gave us a limited surrogate for the missing case papers and register, and it gave us a narrative for following up, looking at wider issues around the home front. Um, and the Hearts Ad was a rich source of material for other, in a rich source of other material too, such as its detailed reports on council um, meetings. And of course, we've already mentioned the National Archive and all its regulations and instructions, and we had some surprising finds of correspondence there between St Albans officials and government departments, which gave new insights to us. We found those more by chance than by, by, by intent, I have to say. We had some very rich local resources. One of our local um, historians, Mike Neighbour, has done, had done extensive research on the Fleetville area um, of the city, which was invaluable. And we found digitised newspapers have been extremely useful and would be an absolute godsend for any of you if, you've got a, if you're searching tribunals for whom newspapers have already been digitised. It's just wonderful to sit at home and press a button. <laughs> rather, we had to use microfilm in the library <laughs> and machines that broke down frequently. Um, and we tried to be systematic and to avoid over-researching topics, but it's awfully hard when you get carried away with a, an interesting idea. Um, and whilst we've learnt much about the formal hearings, I was interested in the point that I, um, I've forgotten your name, you just spoke before us, Sorry. Sally, about this untold, the, 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 hidden, the hidden conversations, because we had that sense that the tribunalists and you know, Ernest Gate, the, the representative, there was an awful lot going on outside the tribunals, and we don't know what, we'll never probably know what, those, what, what it was. Thank you very much. <laughs>